Here we are, we're going into chapter four a little bit. Now, as with the chapter three video uh, that I just recorded, it, is, it would be really good to watch, um, watch or read the, uh, the videos that, I, that I've posted already, but they're on PowerPoint slides and they give a more complete picture of the chapter. What I'm focusing on here is problem, common problems that you guys are having and that will, and you will continue to have semester by semester. In chapter three, it was comparative and absolute advantage. Here it's sh uh, shifts versus movements in demand and supply. So what you are looking at here is a demand curve and a demand curve looks at the relationship of price and quantity from the point of view of the consumer. The consumer, um, we're looking at the price of the product. Let's say this is ice cream. Manku likes to do ice cream and so why not focus on ice cream? So the price of the ice cream versus the quantity of the ice cream. And what the demand curve shows is a relationship between the price and the quantity. What is the relationship? If you drop the price, the quantity will go up. And this particular is the quantity demanded for the ice cream. So it's a relationship that we say between the price and the quantity demanded. This is price, this is quantity demanded. And all we're focusing on is the price in this particular case. All other things are held constant. They are what's known as ceteris paribus. If I was in a classroom, I would be talking about ceteris paribus and it means all else equal. So everything else is held, e is held constant. We're just looking at the at the price. And of course, if, let's check this little puppy up here, if the price goes up, quantity demand would go down. So this is the law of demand. It's this inverse relationship between the price and the quantity. Now other things can and do impact the demand for a particular item. Let's call it ice cream. There are a number of factors that you see in your book. These factors can be such things as income, taste, expectations, substitutes, and compliments. And of course, number of buyers. Now when any of these things change, of course it has an impact on you, the consumer's decision to buy ice cream, but how do we show that impact? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we show that impact by changing the entire curve and making it, making it a different position on, in the space. So let's take a simple one. Uh, I go into all of these explanations uh, in my PowerPoint slide for the, uh, for the chapter. So we can just pick a very, very, very um, simple one, actually one that's, that's more um, germane to Hawaii, expectations. Expectations mean what I think um, is going to happen in the future, I respond today to that action. So let's say in Hawaii's case, I expect there to be a hurricane and Guy Hagi has, um, has pronounced that there's gonna be a hurricane coming in about a couple of days. What are people going to do? Well, they're gonna buy necessities. They're gonna buy necessities like toilet paper and gasoline and, um, and napkins and, uh, and things that, pe that people um, uh, fuel, things that people consider to be, um, to be necessity because they, they, think, they think folks are going to go rush to stores, which of course they do. And with expectations, you buy more today in expectation of what you think is gonna happen in the future. A hurricane happens 
and we would show this as a shift to the right of the demand curve. And that shift to the right means that at, at every price, the consumer is going to buy more than before because of this thing right here. Uh, and uh, expectations, it could be taste, it could be income, substitutes, compliments, and so forth. Um, so that's gonna be a shift to the right. Now, if these expectations means that I'm gonna buy less of a product than before, well, my curve is going to shift to the left. Let's call this D0, 1, and 2. And this is going to be shift this way, shift that way. So a shift is meaning that, that the whole line is going to shift either to the right or to the left. And that would be for something like expectations. Not to be confused with a change in the price which is going to be merely a change in the quantity. When we put the two curves together, supply and demand, you're going to have both shifts and movements working at the same time, but this is what students get confused with a lot, is the distinction between the shift of the curve and a movement along. And there's one of, the, one of the slides in my, uh, in my PowerPoint slide that talks about the independent variable, and that's a really nice way to think about this. What's on the vertical axis is the independent variable. And the rule goes like this. If the independent variable changes and you see it on the graph, it's going to be a movement and therefore a change in quantity demand. If the independent variable changes and it's not on the graph, like expectations, then it's going to be a shift of the curve. So just remember that independent variable you see, movement, change in quantity demand. Independent variable that you don't see, expectations, shift in the curve, um, either to the right or to the left. And we'll always say right and left are supposed to increase, decrease, because when I go into supply, you'll see the actual curve shifting up, but it's really not. It's going to be a, it's going to be a, um, it's, it's, oh, that's why it's going to be shifting this way. It's going to be a, a decrease. But more on that in our next segment.